Hello everyone, here is the Renegade Centurion and today we're gonna play Crusader Kings 3. For those who don't know, Crusader Kings 3 is a game developed by Paradox Interactive and it's a grand strategy game focused on marriage, politics, warfare and alliances. Well, you're gonna play as your own family, so you don't play as a nation as a whole. You're gonna choose a family, a dynasty, you're gonna put this dynasty through many challenges, war, pestilence, intrigue, marriages, and so on. And, well, the objective of the game is to survive until the end, which is set in 1453, which is the historical date for the fall of the Roman Empire. So, let us begin. As for the date, I know that many, many YouTubers have already covered this game and have chose the 1066 date as their favorite date. However, today we're gonna we're gonna try and do a challenge. We're gonna play as any ruler in 8867. As for the rulers, I would choose Bohemia because I believe it's an interesting start. So we'll be starting as Duke Neclan of Bohemia of the Premislit dynasty. He has a couple of vassals, as you can see here in the prison. Litomerice and Hradec. So, we're gonna set up the game rules, enable Ironman, enable the achievements, apply them, and start at normal difficulty. We're either gonna try make, to make our dynasty known and successful, or, well, we have tried. Say game as Bohemia. So, first of all, as you can see, the game can be very overwhelming. You have a quite big map, and as you can see here, we have the whole map of the world. Well, as for now, we're just a duchy, we're not a powerful kingdom, so we're just gonna focus in on our own domains. As you can see, those are domains, our castles, we have Prague, Boleslav, and Kassav. And as you can see, something popped up here, which is Dynasty Legacy, which gives us perks for Dynasty. Lifestyle, which uh, gives us bonuses related to our main character skills. And the Domain Limit. Well, we're gonna explain everything as the time goes. Of course, this is gonna be just a walkthrough, so I'm not gonna explain in detail everything, but I'm gonna give uh, you a simple yet effective guide on how to play the game. Well, just to remind you, I'm not an expert in the game, I'm learning, by the way. I'm learning on the go, so if mistakes are made, I'm sorry, but we're learning along the way. So, let's begin with the Dynasty Legacy. As you can see, here there are all members of the previous Dynasty gain the benefit of these Dynasty Legacies. So, we have Warfare, Law, Gear, which is related to Intrigue, Blood, which is related to Family, Marriage, and our Dynasty, which is very useful. Erudition, Glory, and King. Uh, for the King, well, we have Bunches Laws, which increase the fertility of our spouses by 10%, and our main characters, of course. The Attraction is gonna go up as well, which is, well, it's useful, but not for now. Uh, usually, what I like to do is select Noble Veins. Noble Veins gives you a chance of inheriting congenital traits, by 30% and new good congenital traits by 30% which is massive. Well, congenital traits are basically traits that our character or our characters or descendants have, which can be beautiful, quick, intelligent and so on. So I'm gonna go with this one. And we have unlocked our first perk. Then we have a lifestyle. So as we can see our ruler is very old but he is quite skilled in intrigue, which is focus, uh, focusing on manipulation of people, nature of secrets, cunning plots, and what will bring your friends to fruition. So, as you can see, our ruler is almost a schemer, and he is already a torturer. So, what does traits do? Well, for example, in the schemer, we can enable fabricate hooks, which gives us basically hooks on people so we can blackmail people if we find some secrets. We can dig in for dirt and even kidnap people, which is 
also a useful trait if you want to gain control of some territories which you cannot buy uh, normal means like warfare. Then we have Court of Shadows which disrupt the schemes against us by 50% and prepare it for anything which again gives us more bonuses for enemy hostile action schemes and success change against my courtiers. And then swift execution and a job done right focuses on assassinating people that we want to assassinate for well, reasons. Well, I think we, it's, it's a good uh, opportunity to go with Skaldalgery. Temptation is good if your ruler is a woman and you want to seduce people to obtain either hooks or marriages or alliances, but I think we should go with Skaldalgery. This is done, and as we can see, well, now we should focus on our domains. So, as I said previously, Prague is our main domain, our capital. Then we have Borislav and Kastav. If we click on any of these promises, you can see that there are available buildings here. Well, buildings do a lot of things. For example, forts increases our fort level, which means that our castle, our holding, is way, way more difficult to siege and take as a result. Then we have other buildings such as pastoral lands, hill farms, which are purely economical agricultural buildings, which gives us increased tax and, in some cases, increased levies. And then we have more militaristic buildings such as barracks and military camps, which increase our levies and gives uh, other bonuses such as more infantry damage, heavy infantry damage, and spearmen damage, which is quite useful. But to do this, we need to construct them, and to construct building, well, you need money, of course, and you need time as well. As you can see, building a barracks will cost us 165 ducats, and it's gonna take 3 years. Which is quite prohibitive, as for now, because we're just making a um, year plus 2 per month. So, as you can see here, we are above our domain limit, which means that we, c we are not capable as we can see, our ruler is a schemer, not a steward, so he is, well, very terrible at managing stuff, so as you can see here, we have different types of skills of our ruler, so the first one is diplomacy, which gives us prestige, general opinion with other characters, then we have martial, which gives our ruler bonuses in combat if he is a general, Stewardship, as I previously, focuses on the managing of the dominion and the collection of taxes, which is pretty terrible at. Skaldalgery, intrigue, as we said previously, focuses on intrigue and finding secrets and killing people. And learning, it's well one of the most important ones in my opinion because it increases the technology. So you have a technology tree here, and for each of the eras here, you have different technology and different technologies enable us to build better buildings, discover new buildings, or recruit new units or give us bonuses, like for example the levy reinforcement rate. As I see, uh, we are the head of the Czech culture group, so we decide basically what kind of technology we want to research. And as I see already, we have research the plenary assemblies, which is very important because then you, we can enact the limited crown authority law, which basically gives us bonuses on control over our own vessels. So I think we can pass it already. So it means that rulers can change between available partition succession laws, which is very important, I'm gonna explain it later. Titles can be revoked, vassals can be retracted, and plan government vassals would fight at least 5% of levies and 2% of income. So we're gonna pass this law. This means that, for example, if our Baron here, Count Slavibor, is not very loyal, which he is fortunately, uh, in this case, we could basically remove his title. It means that we can ask for the country, for example, of Sadets, and he might even accept this decision. If he doesn't, well, he can rally other vassals and declare war on us as a result, which is not very good if you have a swarm of vassals. But if your vassal is not very loyal and you think that, for example, he wants to kill you or 
perhaps take your throne or conspire against you, you can take his land just to show him his boss. Or if you want to increase your taxes or your dominion. But as for now, as you can see, our ruler uh, sucks stewardship, so we cannot possibly take another domain because this will give us maluses, like for taxes and levy size. So we're not going to do that. So what we can do? Well, as we can see, we have a spouse, and our spouse is very terrible at stewardship. She's good in intrigue and she's good in learning. So at this point, we can go to our court and we and on our council. Sorry, as as we can see, we have different people that have different tasks. A duchess can assist us in something. For example, she can assist us, assist in managing the domain, which could increase our domain holdings. But as we can see, it does nothing because she's well terrible. But at this point, we could extend our patronage, which gives us more points for learning. And as we can see here, if we have more points for learning, we can discover technologies quicker. So we're gonna discover um, quilted armor for now. Or city planning. And they have the they have the same years to be discovered. So city planning, I think it's better in terms of economy because we can build villages, shrines, halls, and other buildings. So we're gonna do that. So our wife is gonna help with the patronage, and here we have the head of the church or the religion. So we see that he has a plus 28 relation with us, so it means that he endorses us, which means he rallies the people to our banner, so he's not gonna give us problem. And when you're not endorsed, it means that your vassals and your populace is gonna be less loyal to you, you're gonna receive less levies, less taxes, and even sometimes less piety. And piety is very useful when you want to well create other religions because you can, of course, in this game you can you want you want to make a religion based on uh, I don't know polytheism or monotheism. You want to detach from Christianity, you can do it, but you need piety for that. And as we can see, our piety is increasing, is increasing every month, but not so much. So uh, Bourget, well, he's loyal for now. He endorses us, which is good. Uh, Mer. Damasso, he is not very loyal, he's craven, uninformed. Uh, we had a short reign, which is strange because we already 67, but whatever. And he is a powerful vassal. Powerful vassals, well, those are people that hold very important holdings, like for example cities, or they're your vassals, and in order to be quenched, they require you to put them in uh, high positions, like for example as a chancellor, but we see that Damasa is, well, he's not even terrible, he's abysmal in diplomacy, so we should find somebody better. As I as I already see, there's my courtier, that he's a 16 in diplomacy, so it's way better, we're gonna find Damasa, I don't care, he's not a vassal, so he can just well, suck it. <laughs> we're gonna fire him and put Koyata. Well, Koyata is not very loyal because he's unreformed and he thinks that our religion, the Slovenska Pravda, is evil because he's a Catholic. But uh, my strategy is to actually convert to Catholicism because there are many advantages to that. First of all, as we can see from this point in the map, the majority of the, the most powerful well countries that bother me are Catholics. So. What's gonna happen is that uh, sometimes uh, Catholic rulers and especially Moravia, as I can see here, they could create a causal belly against us to invade us with the excuse of uh, a religious war. So I think that I'm gonna convert to Catholicism and stay loyal to the Pope. It's gonna give us many advantages and the first advantage is that we are not gonna be invaded by by our neighbors. So, let's see. Uh, okay, convert to faith. As we see, we have armed pilgrimages, ascendance, communion, and monasticism. Since our last full 
Platonus, Deceitful, Sadistic and Vengeful, while the features are Chaste, Temperate, Honest, Compassionate and Forgiving. Our character, as we see here, he is, well, cynical, just and craven. But as, as we saw previously, just may be a virtue, if I'm not mistaken. Temperate, honest. Well, just is a very positive trait that a character has. The more positive trait our character has, the higher of the value of the piety increases every month. So, as I said previously, let's follow the strategy and let's convert to Catholicism. So, as we can see, our son, Count Hoss. Hostivit will convert, Count Vislav will convert, Count Slavibor will convert, while the mayors of the cities will not, but we do not have 250, so we need to wait a little bit to collect piety. Okay, let's do that. Then what else do we have to do? Disabled building in Boleslav. The castle, the castle is disabled, but you will it will be re-enabled next month, okay. Powerful vessels expect castle position. Major Damasan, no, he's not gonna have that position. We can declare wars, I'm not interested in that. We are too weak to do that. Family members can get married. Well, as I said previously, this game is focused more on families and characters. So, instead of focusing on your nation as a whole, you should focus on the relationship that you build with your vassals and your subjects, as well as with your family. So, as we can see, our grandson and champion, Spitimir, can marry. So, Spitimir is the son of our deceased son, so our grandson. And he can marry somebody. Let's see how many sons do we have. So we have one child, Count Hastivit, and uh, he is our primary heir. So it means that when we die, the duchy is gonna pass to him. So the duchy and, of course, our vessels are gonna pass all to him. Then we have his child, which is Borivoy. Borivoy is very good at intrigue as well, and average in learning, but he is, well, poor or terrible in all of the other departments. He is insightful, cynical and shy, which is a not a very good trait, and he's also paranoid. <laughs> okay, yeah, it's, it doesn't look good, but can we find maybe a suitable spouse for him? <sighs> no very good characters found. Mm. Okay, I see. Maybe we cannot arrange a marriage because he's not in our court, he's currently in prison. So what we can do? Uh, our grandson, Spitimir, well, he's in Prague, so we can actually find a wife for him. He is gregarious, patient and compassionate, which are good traits. Unfortunately, he's not very good. He doesn't have high skills in anything except an average learning. But it's still something. What we can do is find a suitable spouse which could either give us alliances. For example, if we marry him to Przybyszets, we're gonna have a, well, first of all, a spouse for him which will give him children. Of course, he's heterosexual, so there's not, not gonna be any issue with having children because sometimes character can be. Uh, either bisexual or homosexual, and if a character is homosexual, well, that's a uh, well, great danger to our dynasty, because he may be not be able to feather children. <laughs> so, as I said, if we marry Spitimir to Przybyszets, uh, we should get an alliance with Lower Silesia. Um, what does she have? Well, she's good in trick, she is average in diplomacy, but she's uh, lacking in other ones. Uh, but she's Midas Touched. Hmm. Okay, Midas Touched is a very good trait because she can be helpful with stewardship later. Uh, yeah, okay, send the proposal first. Then Stroymir as well. He's our grandson. He is pretty compassionate and craven. Mm, not very good traits, but he's gonna do. He's not very great, so we should find somebody that has 
a high sum of skills. Irene, for example, she's Finnish, but she does not belong to our religion, which gives us a negative bonus to our relationship. Because for her, our religion is hostile. We could try to convert her, but she should have a higher value than that, so she would not accept it. And it's a very, it's a very bad thing to have somebody married to your child or grandson if it's a different religion, because those people may conspire against you with other people, or they can plot against you alone. So it's not very recommendable that you will do that. We have Agnieszka, which is Polish, and she has high values for stewardship especially, and she has our same religion, she's stubborn, diligent and sadistic, uh, but she's a charismatic negotiator, so yeah, okay, she's a little bit older, but she'll do. So this is settled, then we can negotiate an alliance with Count Hostilit, of course, he's gonna accept. And we can raid. Uh, we're not interested. We're not so barbaric. Um, as, I, as I said previously, the main goal of this campaign is going to be an introductory campaign. And I'm going to try to under explain you what I've understood of the game so far. And the main goal would to be creating the Kingdom of Bohemia. And then when we creating the Kingdom of Bohemia, we will establish our house as one of the most important ones. Like I want to well make perfect perfect daughters and sons, make them beautiful, intelligent, and with all the best traits in the world. So we're gonna make like our dynasty like the best dynasty. As I said, either we succeed or well we fail trying, I guess. So, as we have done everything right now, I don't believe we have anything else to do. We cannot convert, of course, our Chancellor, that's unfortunate. But what we're gonna do, we can say to him to maybe improve domestic affairs, so he's gonna improve relations relationship with different vassals. Let's do that. Or maybe, yeah, no, we should, I think... There's a better idea, the better idea is to well, focus on foreign affairs, there's a uh, uh, lesser chance that we get invaded by somebody until, well, we get converted to catharsis, so we can start. Let's unpress the pause button and the time flows. So we're currently on the 4th of January 1867 AD and our marriage proposals for our grandsons are being accepted. Our alliance has been accepted, perfect. And we are allied, we should be allied to Salish, I think. No, we're just allied to Pilsen, but we should have grandkids. Yes, are they married? Should be married. Okay, whatever. Okay, spouse aids you in intrigue studies. That is good. We're gonna learn quicker. So there is a raid. We want. To, we can do a raid, but we're not interested in that. We have passed the limited crown authority, and we need to do something about our holdings. We have too many holdings. Uh, let's see what do we have. Well, Prague is obviously ours. We're not gonna give them to anybody. Uh, Boleslav, well, it's a normal castle. We can grant it to somebody. Kaslav, instead, he eats a castle, but it has a special building. And the special building is the Kutna Hora mine. Which, if constructed, it costs a lot, 440 ducats. But it's gonna give us 3 ducats a month per tax. The county is gonna get an increase in holding taxes, and there is gonna be a development growth, which is huge. So. I don't see ourselves uh, granting Kastav to anybody, so we're gonna give it to... We're gonna give Boleslav to somebody. Uh, to who? Well, we can do it for relevance, give it to our grandson. And I think... Spitimir could be good, but... 
Stroimir, it's better in stewardship, so it's gonna manage the holding weapon. Uh, what about opinion? Opinion of, our, of us, it's... Confidislav has the highest opinion, and he's Midas touched. So since, he, since he's so good and he's our steward, we should reward him with the holding of Boleslav. Why not? Grand titles. But he was already has a domain, so... Yeah. I mean, giving him another castle will make him very powerful. Even if he likes us, he already has an heir, so it's gonna... Well, make the situation for us much more difficult, because we'll be more reliable on, us, on the whims of our subject, and we don't want to <laughs> end up as Poland in the 17th century. Am I right? So, yeah, um, let's see. Oh, we should find also a medician, a physician, whatever you call him. So if anything happens to our health, a physician could help us. Hmm. So, bonus love, it's gonna be granted to... Let's see, some of our skills. But this love is very skilled. Let's see for stewardship. Space love, well... He likes us because we had a low grade communal identity. There's a holy side which is block. There's trust which is a virtue. Yeah, uh, it is love pops out, but we're gonna give it to Spislav. So Spislav has become our boss. He is a count. So there are basically four main titles in this game. There are counts which uh, only control one holding. Mares, which are just a lower grade count, they just hold cities, and churches are held by uh, priests and cardinals. Then we have dukes, which is us, we are the duke. So we have a duchy, uh, the, the duchy of Bohemia, as you can see. Then the next style, title is king, so you should have a kingdom. And to create a kingdom, we need to have, for example, the kingdom of Bohemia, we need to have five the Euro countries, which we have eight. We need 5,500 ducats and duchy titles required, which we have only one. So we should be able to conquer Moravia if we want to become kings of Bohemia first. So kings, becoming king is our, one of the main objectives, and then there is empire types. So you can become Emperor, which is the highest position you can aspire to be. So for example, if we uh, hold 88 counties, a thousand ducats, and two kingdoms, we could become an empire, basically. For example, like the Southern Baltic, Baltic Empire. There are other empires, like you, as you can see, the Byzantine Empire, which, uh, as a side note, historical side note, it was never called Byzantine in real life. Uh, the Byzantines, as the game calls them, are basically Romans. So it's not the Byzantine Empire, it's just the Roman Empire. There was never a Byzantine Empire. The, Byz the word Byzantine came from the original name of Constantinople here, which is Byzantium. Byzantium. And Byzantine Empire is just a name used... Uh, centuries later, after the fall of the Byzantine Empire in 1453. So this is a, a smaller uh, historical mistake uh, made by the developers, but whatever. We'll, we'll just call them Byzantine. So, um, as for the problems related to the crown and your own dynasty, well, there is the succession. Succession is gonna be our main problem for the early game. I'm going to explain why. Well, as you can see now, we have the Confederate Partition. It means that under Confederate Partition, your titles will be divided equally between your children. New titles may be created for younger realm heirs. It means that if you have a multiple multitude of children and you have a Confederate Partition, it means that each child uh, will receive a, a part of your reign. For example, uh, let's imagine that we had all of Bohemia. Like there are no vassals, we control all of Bohemia, a ruler is a, is a super chat, a 20 steward, they can control like 12 holdings. 
if he has four children and he dies suddenly, it means that each heir is gonna have a portion of the country, an independent portion. It means that the kingdom is gonna collapse on itself, which is very, very dangerous. The only, the only kingdom or empire that does not have this in the start date is the Byzantine Empire, which is kind of weird because um, other kingdoms at the time already had a primogeniture partition. It means it means that the Firstborn received the kingdom, like the majority of the kingdom, and the rest became vassals. But whatever, we need to survive confederate partition. Because to change it, we need technology first, uh, and then we need to have prestige, which shows how important our family is in the world, and it shows us the level of fame. And with greater prestige, it comes greater chances of uh, passing laws becoming more prestigious means that uh, rulers are gonna respect us more and we can find better marriages better alliances and so on so as you see here we should find the technologies first so our current objective is to survive this awful awful succession law the gender law well there is some male preferences means that if you have sons and daughters your sons are gonna get the kingdom from you if you pass away. Because, well, you can change it, you can make it equal, so even daughters can get uh, titles if you die, or female only, <laughs> which means that only daughters can gain titles from your kingdom, and their sons will be left with nothing, basically. Uh, the hair is Count Hostvit, which is our son, so we already have a hair. And he's homosexual, uh, and he has a son, which is surprising. Uh, our boy, Borivoy, uh, he still don't know, he's still exploring, I guess. So we just hope he will be homosexual to have more children, in case something happens, because unfortunately those are the Middle Ages and... Uh, well, modern medicine was off the hook for people, even royalty. So, accident happens. Hunting accidents, especially. And, well, our hairs can die. And if our hair dies, and we have no more hairs, and if we die, well, the game is over. So, this is a very important aspect of the game. So, let's go. As you can see there, we have a uh, total of soldiers, and we have a uh, Total of 1,052 soldiers, which 100 are light horsemen and 100 pikemen. So, we click the decision. Court physician. This world is full of dangers, even to a duke and his court. As Prima requests my servants who have inquired after recommendations. Now they have assembled a few options to choose from. Well, we have the first option, Yindrich. Yindrich is a physician, okay? Which is a very positive trait for a medic, because he actually knows how to do his job, he's been on the field, so there is a lesser, lesser chance, even though there is still a chance that he can botch a treatment and gives us maluses or even kill us in a treatment if we choose the option to, well, get cured by any means, but he, if he's a physician, it means that he already has experience, he's been trained, he's been educated in being a physician, so... He has plenty of experience in being a physician, which is good. He is arrogant, trusting, diligent. He is very good in diplomacy, actually, so we can actually give him a second job as a chancellor, if you want. He's handsome, which is also a very positive trait, because it increases fertility, attractiveness, and diplomacy as well. So, and he's a lowborn. Well, too bad, but still, very good choice. Let's see, and then we have a blind woman. Woman, Viola. Viola, she's a brilliant strategist, oh my. But she is not very good with learning and she's not a physician and she's blind. So, uh, yeah, I think Yindrich is gonna be the best choice for us. We're gonna pay him 50 and he's gonna, he's gonna join our court. So we have a medicus right now and the time is flowing. Let's see what the future will hold for us. Hmm, let's see. 
Let's see, the King Rotisraf doesn't like us. He it's he has a minus fifty-seven. Okay, he's a Catholic, so he thinks our religion is evil. And uh, does he want our territories? I think. Queen, his wife, Queen Blasta, she doesn't like us at all. She's zealous, she's Catholic, so she's a zealous person. Oh, she's sick, something happened. Okay, then the primary hair also hates us, so that's why I said that's a, well, a very good idea to actually convert to Christianity, because uh, I think Moravia or East Francia uh, are gonna be our greatest threats as for now. There's a raiding army coming down to our borders, which is another good sign if they want to pillage some cities. And unfortunately, we're not strong enough and we cannot afford to have a standing army in our current economic situation, which is too bad. But we'll try to make it work somehow. And if not, there's gonna be always opportunity later. As it seems, um, okay, every nook and cranny, a dark knight can truly make the shadows in my castle always come alive. The perceived risk of unsanctioned visitors rise every, ever higher for every unguarded corner spotted. If I alone can see this many faults, imagine what more people with a similar perspective could do. So there's a problem of security in our castle. He, our uh, our character is uh, an intrigue expert, so one thing to say is that once a character has a certain lifestyle, there are gonna be different random events popping up, which uh, uh, gives uh, another point for this game, which creates uh, basically a sandbox for uh, almost uh, endless opportunity, I would say, which is very fun and it doesn't make your game boring in any way. Uh, so let's let's see what we can do. I will have a group of discrete agents. Uh, we'll lose 50 ducats, which is uh, bad because we need money, we need income uh, at this rate. Or my perspective alone is enough. Um, he's a uh, 11 in intrigue, which is not very good. But our spouse is a 12, so she can help us. Uh, we don't have any. Any kind of risk for now. So we could hire the agents, but I think that the perspective alone would be enough. We don't have any real threat against us or our family at this moment, so we're just gonna save money. It is a good choice, I don't know. Additional taxes, you gained 85. Well, that's great. Your steward's excellent stewardship skill led to this windfall. Excellent. So we have more money. What we could do with the money is either... Well, I think that we should develop Prague. Um, Prague first, we should develop our real capital first. We could uh, build hill farms, we could uh, increase our tax holdings by 0.3 per month. Which uh, is not so impressive at the beginning, I know, but it's still better than nothing. I think it's gonna be a worthwhile investment. And then something you can do is that you can upgrade your farms. So there's a hillside fields, then we can upgrade, up, upgrade them to fell pastures. And then we can build root servers and so on and so on, which will give us more taxes, more advantages for the defenders in the battle, more supply limit and even toughness for our skirmishers, which is very good. As for soldiers, where this is the composition of our army. We have a total of 1,021 as for now. We have uh, 815 levies, which levies are basically conscripted peasants. Uh, they're basically a mass infantry which we can uh, <laughs> well, basically throw at the enemy. While we have also men at arms. Men at arms are basically professional soldiers. We have pikemen and light horsemen. However, uh, pikemen and light horsemen have different jobs, different tasks in a battle. Pikemen, uh, well, they counter light cavalry and heavy cavalry, which is very important because cavalry can do a lot of damage against, for example, archers or our ladies. So they counter cavalry, which is very, very good, but the most important thing is that they have bonuses on difficult terrains such as mountains, 
which increases toughness, desert mountains, and hills. And as we can see, Bohemia is full of forests, mountains, the ciudades, and hills. So we're gonna leave our pikemen as they are. But for light cavalry, light horsemen are good against archers, which is a very good bonus, but unfortunately, they are not very good in winter, in harsh winter. Uh, they're not very good in mountains and in wetlands and in hills as well. And the maintenance as an raised is very high. Especially when they're fully maintained. Uh, I think we're just gonna delete the regiment for now. We're gonna save some money. Hopefully nobody's gonna attack, uh, attacks, attack us or invade us or raid us as we are concerned, and we hope to collect enough piety to convert to Christianity. Killer in our midst! Oh no! The smell hits me before the door is opened. A heavy and meaty odor that permeates the area. It is the stench of the newly dead. Another murder, my lord. Yindrich whispers, wipes his body hands upon as he stands up after looking over the body. We must stop this senseless killer. Okay, so what we can do? Uh, I will scare the castle for this murderer, which launches an investigation. Let's put the body and forget this travesty, which is not a very good choice, especially because, first of all, the murder is not gonna stop if we choose this. And every courtier is gonna be scared, is gonna be fearful, and it's gonna lose opinion of you because you didn't do anything. Uh, as my card physician, you should study the bodies, so an investigation is launched. Uh, I believe that we should... Uh, we're not very good at the injury, but we're average. Uh, I think we should go with card physician. Let him study the bodies, he's a good card physician, let's do it. Well, very good. He's he's decent enough. He should figure out what's going to happen. As the time passes by, there is a waiting army. Murderers at court. A curse lifted. What happened? Okay, as time goes by, a new, no new body stood up. I gradually relax again. The killer has stopped. However, I cannot help but notice that the murder stopped as soon as Count Hostwit left court. Hmm. So our son, he's a, a shy, arbitrary, temperate, homosexual murderer and an astute intellectual. Hmm. I'll keep an eye on him. He's a powerful vassal, he respects us, but uh, you never know. Damn, some of these events are even better than Game of Thrones, I'm telling you. Okay, let's speed up maybe the time a little bit. Oh, we're being raided. From whom? The army of Bzeik. So they have 476, they have 300 archers and 55 light infantry. Oh no. Those archers are gonna beat us very badly. If we launch an attack here, what we can do? I, oh, you see, like, I, I wish I could have my cavalry here. That was a very bad decision, but we had to save money. Um, there are choices to be made, of course, and, oh, uh, well. I might sound like a very bad ruler, but we're cynical, so, yeah, just just leave them to their fate. No. Uh, it's, it's not our holding, so the only thing that we can do later is just to increase control in the county. Oh no. <clears throat> ah, too bad. Yeah, we, we have lost control unfortunately of the country. It means that there, is, uh, there are malicious regarding taxes, control. In fact, as we see here, there is like a reduced succession. There's a loot taken and levies are decreased because everything was raided, so villages and towns were burned down. Uh, this is an unfortunate situation and we have less levies as a result. Because our vessels are very important because not only they are loyal, they give taxes to us, but they grant us levies, which is very, very important. 
that's unfortunate, but life is life. And life in the Middle Ages, especially before the year 1000, was very tough. I'm not already in Carmio. Uh, that two months will be stopped. The readings will stop in almost a month. Oh. Well, not a great start, but I believe our dynasty can prosper and reach greatness one day. Okay, we can unlock a new perk for the Intrigue lifestyle. So, we did everything we could and I think that Schemer is now the next one. So, we gained the, tra tra the trade, so Schemer, which gave us way more Intrigue, like plus 5 and Hostile Skin Power plus 25. McLean lives to understand and manipulate the things that drive other people and exploit them. So it's a very good opportunity to actually... Well, <laughs> oh, okay, okay, so... I had the intention of actually spying on my son to discover if he has any secrets or if he was a murderer or not. But as I can see, my son is actually the spy master. So one funny thing is that if our son hated us and he wanted to murder us, he could murder us because he is the spy master of the court. <laughs> So yeah, uh, I'm not. I, I just uh, well, I prefer not to know anything uh, as for now. <laughs> so let's see what's gonna end up. Okay, you can declare wars. I'm not interested for now. Uh, Count Bislav wants a position in the council, but I'm not gonna give it to him right now. He's, he receives a country, he's grateful, wants to see it, which uh, well, greatly decreases his opinion to us, and he's unreformed. It means that he still lives as a tribal leader, I think. No, he's a canon, so. Uh, because they're, well, we are a, we are, well, a duke, so we have a feudal holding, but some vassals are still tribes, which are not reformed. Witnessing my modest liege, I hereby invite you to a feast at my court in Vito Merica. It will be a great affair worthy of your honorable presence. It will be my pleasure. A warm welcome. Every guest is gathered in the great hall and our gracious host, Count Slavibor, has welcomed us all to the feast. This is better be worth my time, okay? Let's see what's gonna happen in the feast. Okay, in all. After having spoken over dinner for a while, Count Slavibor learns over to tell me that he finds it impressive how knowledgeable I am about so many different things. He recognizes true intellect I see, so he, we gain 75 prestige and he gains 5 opinion of us for 10 years, which is good. Loyal vassals, nice, I like it. Dead Dilemma, okay, the feast is dwindling down, and I find myself deep in conversation with my subversive marshal, Count Slavibor. He inquires about the, my opinion on troop composition, a subject he is deeply interested in himself. Well, we can say that it is a subject that fascinates us as well, which gives us to the opinion of us for him. We go closer and we can form a friendship, I could not care less, which is not advisable, in my opinion. I am more interested in you, which gives us 20 opinion. Well, he gains 20 opinion for, for us, but I think that it is a subject that fascinates me as well, and we can find up, we can make a bond with him. We can bond and we can become friends later. Which is great because he's very loyal. What a feast! I will remember the day spent in Count Slavimor's halls for a long time to come. Now it is time to wash off the traces of merriment and wine and once more bless you my duties as a lord of the Lord. Well, well, my friend. We lose stress, and stress is well very important because stressed characters can take bad decisions, they can develop uh, negative traits such as paranoia uh, or even madness, and if they become too stressful, well, they can even die of a heart attack. <laughs> So 
So let's see what's gonna happen. Uh, our son is raiding somebody, which is interesting. Uh, Great Moravia. Oh, so oh, okay. So the Moravians have raided us before. Someone else. My wife, Duchess Ponislava, is once again absent from our chambers as night falls. She has been distant lately, lost in thought and rarely seen at court. I am, am I not long, not to her satisfaction, sorry. <laughs> is she simply busy or could she be warning someone else's bed? So we can choose. Uh, so we believe our wife is not loyal to us, so we can ask her directly. Uh, do you have another? I will investigate this myself, which we can have uh, some possible outcomes. So there is a, in the majority of the cases we c are successful. So if she has been unfaithful, we will discover it. And if we do not, we will gain 40 stress because we were unable to find any sequence. Uh, we can choose to make her followed by some of our servants. But she will never disrespect the, san the san sanctity of our marriage. Ah, well, she's callous, content and gluttonous, and uh, she's an astute intellectual. Mm. She's a cowardly villain. Uh, let's see, let's investigate, let's make this interesting. My misgivings were not unfounded, I have found evidence of Ponstrava's infidelity. The lying which was welcomed by my friend, oh no, Count Slavibor. How could he? into her bed. As far as I can tell, it only happened once. This cold comfort in the face of her betrayal. Oh no. Slavibor, how could you? Like, she's 25 years older than him. Like, how? How? Everyone will know of your treachery, Jezebel. Uh, so we can do this. Uh, she gains the trait, a jutter. She loses opinion. Uh, we lose opinion on her, of course. We can imprison her as well. Count Slavibor uh, gains the trait for the cattle, and he loses level of devotion. Uh, or we can forgive her. Uh, I forgive you this time. As far as I can tell, it only happened once. Uh, you gain a weak hook on oh, Dutch Polislava. Well, let's roleplay it. So we are craven, we are just, and we are cynical. Uh, and we are a torturer as well, so we are dreadful as a ruler. So yeah, everyone will know your treachery, Jezebel. And the next step is to imprison her. Yes. So we're gonna imprison her. She's a known criminal, she's unfaithful and an adulterer allowing us to imprison her without being viewed as a tyrant. So if you are viewed as a tyrant, there is a high chance that your vessel will gain a coalition against you, they will join a coalition and they could overthrow you or your dynasty. So it's very important not to be seen too much as a dreadful tyrant. But in this case, you know, I'll make an exception. We have the following effects, so she loses 30 opinion, and all of our family are gonna lose opinion for us, but I don't care. Let's imprison the unfaithful witch. As per my orders, Duchess Polislava is now to be confined to her home. I've posted some of my cards to ensure she's compliant uh, with the house arrest. Good. Now let's see, we almost reached the necessary level of devotion if we want to convert to Christianity and then we will convert our counts as well. So Slavibor hasn't uh, lost opinion on us but he has gained a fornicator trait which is bad if you want to reach some goals related to piety because he will be seen as unfaithful. So let's see. And now on the 1st of June, uh, not yet. We need to wait a month. So on the 21st of June of uh, 70, 1870, we convert to the Catholicism faith. Let's convert. 
With my decision to convert to Catholicism, I arranged for a priest to come to my court and conduct the rites. While I don't really believe the drivel that the priest sprouts, there were enough political advantages to converting that I knew I needed to do this sooner or later. Regardless of my reasons, I can take comfort in knowing that the majority of my realm stands united under God, a true Catholic realm. Glory to God, at least I have Naji to quit guide me. Ah, uh, okay, go closer. So, what he thinks of us? Personal diplomacy plus two. Let's see. Well, he's gonna gain a lot of opinion of us. He's young. So, he uh, he will become our cardinal, our head of faith in our nation. So, it's good to have a high opinion of our priest because uh, he's gonna endorse us, so we're gonna receive bonuses in piety, taxes, and levies. So, at least I have Nate to guide me. And he's gonna give a lot of uh, opinion of us. It means that he's gonna endorse us. Oh no, okay, so he's. Oh, okay, okay, I made a mistake. So, he's just a priest, but. It's fine. Let's be friendly with him. He baptized us. So our head of the religion of our head of faith, so our cardinal, uh, our bishop, is uh, Fothood. He is Gaelic, so Gaelics are part of the British culture. And uh, well, he endorses us, fortunately. So we're not gonna have a lot of bonuses. I mean, just plus 0 0.2. And we're gonna have only 52 levies, but it's better than nothing. What we can do is sway him. Sway, uh, well, you're gonna send him letters, you're gonna praise him for his work, you're gonna praise his personality, and you'll try to improve his opinion of you, and possibly you'll try to make him your friend. So we're gonna start the scheme. And since we are schemer, there is a higher chance that we will actually succeed in swaying him. Then we're gonna send uh, Slavibor to Boleslav and he's gonna take three months to pacify the region and at the same time uh, we'll send Fothund to convert faith. So, as for now, I think that this episode was long enough as for the first episode, as for the introductory episode you need to understand that my style of commenting and my style of making the videos is still on the development. So if you see this video, please share it. If, any, if you have any comments that will help the channel grow or if you have any comments about how the channel sucks, how the channel is good, please leave a comment, leave a like, subscribe and see you in the next episode. Bye.